If you were a spice, you would be, um... Hmm. Some bland spice. What a loser. Burn the entire library! Without thinking, you grab as many books as you can and throw them into the fire as well! You add a chair and a table too. Turns out pretty much everything in the library is flammable. Uh, Liam and Damien get into the spirit and are soon adding computers, magazines, and students! STUDENTS! NO! Ooh! Hold on! Yeah, here we are in Monster Prom. You know that we are about to go date a guy named Tom, yeah. We are about to go buy our dress, yeah, it's glittery. Yeah, I'm about to go into the city, 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 ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, we are about to party, uh, uh, you know that we eating party, yeah, yeah, you better not break my heart, e uh, 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 uh. Guys, welcome to Monster Param, which is basically a game where, you know, we play as some teenager that is trying to ask someone out to go to Param, okay? I'm very interested, I heard good things about it, and yeah, I'm very excited to play. How many of you are there? One player? Short game, full game, full game! Ah! Spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Choose player what? Ooh, I get to say who I wanna play as. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, I like the zombie girl. I love the fight. I love her style. Oh, I don't know. I don't know who to choose. Okay, I kind of like the brightness of her style. Let's go with her. Red. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Red Amir, custom name. Let's name her. Um. Ooh, what should I name her? Ginger. No, that sucks. That sucks. Why did you guys almost let me do that? Let's name her. Oh, she, she low key kind of looks like me with the red hair. Okay, let me explain this name. Her hair is like fire, right? And you know how like a fire truck, it goes wee -oo, wee -oo, that kind of thing? That's her name. Wee -oo. <laughs> wee woo. Yes. Here we go. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Six weeks were left. As we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic hey, classmates. Yeah. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Okay. Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Wait, he loves fire. He likes fire. That's like the obvious choice. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Liam DeLioncourt, the the 400s oh he no they they're saying he's like over 400 years old a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he has he was truly a lovable dork oh yay sweet polly geist 22 a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things what? and vera ober oberlin 23 a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business it was clear it had to be one of them but who we only had six weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Where we know more, we're now using our PhD in BS to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having a stat that better reflects your two selves. Okay, let's start. You're elected for president for a day. What's the first law you pass? Ooh, ooh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, wow. There's no way there's booty on that, on that picture. There's no way. Trivia fact. Presidents don't pass laws. So is this a trick question or are you just being an idiot? One dollar bills will now include a picture of me and the inscription, beware, too much awesomeness. My presidency might last a day, but my fame will last forever. You can deduct taxes by writing sonnets instead. Amount of taxes deducted are calculated based on the beauty of sonnets. Ooh, I know taxes really be hitting. Dang. 
Um, I would deduct taxes. So creative. Okay, I'm creative. Democracy is just broken. What would be the best way of choosing the leaders of modern society? Whoever can play the most heartbreaking violin solo wins. We create a reality show called America's Next Top President, where the candidates compete in all kinds of physical and mental challenges. Voter turnout would increase and we would turn a profit on. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. You put all the candidates in an empty room with a wild grizzly bear. Whoever kills the bear should be our president. If, if everyone dies, then it's obvious the bear should be our president. That's insane. I like the second option. Fun. Cool. What would be the most appealing in a love partner? Uh, hmm. Huh. What would be the most appealing? Sharp wits, a big horn, kawaii eyes, a taste for party, soft fur, a very sundry personality. What does sundry mean again? A sundry acts mean and sometimes violent, but on the outside, but is sweet on the inside. Huh. What do I want? I feel like sharp wits is cool. Soft fur, I guess that could be nice, I guess. I'm gonna say quiet eyes. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like quiet eyes is like, I don't know. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Um. Oh, oh, wow. I could go anywhere? Whoa, week one, morning. Okay, so there's six weeks. I have seven smarts. I have four boldness, seven creativity, three charm, seven fun, five money. Oh, I'm I'm broke. Let's let's do something. Um let's do something fun. Let's go over here. That day during recess, you started a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. How many people are in the school? Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. <laughs> we don't. You gain plus two fun. You see Miranda and Vera chatting away, their eyes gleaming the gleam of the scheming. Hey, you. Crowd surfs isn't doing nearly as well as I thought it would. Oh, if it isn't, wee -woo! Greetings, fellow classmate. Would you like to be a customer? Once upon a time, surfs were only for the rich and fabulous, like Vera and myself. But now, thanks to our app, CrowdSurfs, you too can have your very own crowdfunded surf. The app is being generously funded by my royal family, who wish for everyone to experience the joys of royalty <laughs> and get richer off of it. I think our business might be failing because the surfs are simply not high enough quality to maintain customer interest. I don't even know what they're talking about. They're yapping. I don't even, what are you talking about? If there's one thing royalty has taught me, and there's definitely more than one, is that you can trick anyone into doing anything as long as you give them the right incentives. Why not just start with the easily manipulated in the first place? Wee woo! What do you think? What? Why not recruit people who want to be bossed around at a leather daddy convention? Everyone wants to win. Host an unpaid labor competition where the prize is doing more unpaid labor. Oh, I don't even know. What is a leather daddy convention? Let's do unpaid labor. I'm creative. Oh, what a delightful idea. It's true for those who are not born to fame, gaining it or watching others gain it is a favorite pastime. I'll have my press agent advertise it as the hottest competition since Metropolis is next top terror. And so who wants to be an unpaid laborer is born. People compete their hardest at various demeaning tasks and the winner gets to continue to perform them as a surf. My knight in shiny armor. Wow, there you are, my most loyal of subjects. It seems everyone is caught up in surf mania. Several new spin-offs have been ordered, including Unpaid Labor with the Stars and The Real Surfs of Metropolis. Magazine covers are now featuring the 100 hottest surfs. We have a waiting list the size of Miranda's ego. That's the Kraken calling, the octopus tentacle, but whatever. Okay. Uh, our business is making me even richer and more notable than I was before. And it's all thanks to you. You may be a peasant, Wee Woo, in my eyes. Don't You're a me. slightly less filthy peasant. You never thought you'd hear Miranda say such kind things. She must really like you. Excuse me? Miranda and Vera give you a cut of their success, earning you two money and one charm. Hey, yo. Ooh. Ooh, who do I want to sit by? Okay, 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 who's that? Ooh, who do I want to sit by? Ooh, this guy, remember, he likes fire. You came upon Damien sneering at Miranda's elaborate silverware spread. Well, 
her eating serfs chow down obediently at a neighboring table. So are serfs like servants? I still don't get why you collect all those stupid forks and spoons and stuff. What a noob. I mean, even the knives don't really look that deadly. Silly boy, this silverware is not for killing. Things can be for stuff other than killing? That's lame. It's basically useless. I mean, you don't even eat. Your serfs do it for you. Well, of course they do. But they're not using any of your silverware. Naturally, they aren't. Serfs must eat with their hands, as befits the lower classes. She is so, like, she is so snobby. So you're saying this silverware collection has no practical purpose. Things have practical purposes? I can't, bro. The two could go round and round like this forever, unless you say something to resolve the dispute. Damien's right, Mary. Maybe it is time you started murdering people with your silverware. Well, lay off Miranda, Damien. What about your collection of exotic corpses? You know what, Mary? You should do something better with your silverware. I mean, I was just giving her, you know, ish, but I am in favor of any plan that gets more people. That is crazy. Oh, how barbaric. Are you sure that's the right thing to do? Yep, 100%. Absolutely. Well, all right then. Yum, yum. Whoa, whoa! Yum yum, Daisy, take the sharpest of these silvered wares in your filthy peasant hands and go a murdering, would ya? I didn't know they were actually gonna go and do something! I was joking! I was kind of hoping you would do the murdering yourself. If we're living in an age wherein a lady can't outsource her senseless murders to her servants, I don't know what the world is coming to. Fair enough. As long as the murders get done, I guess I don't care. This is crazy. Miranda even outsources some silverware murder to you and Damien as a team. It really brings you closer to each other. Yo. Let's go up here. What is this, library? That day, you spend some time on the library's PCs, playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. But who cares? This time it paid off, so fudge it. You gained two money. Oh, wow. Can I play it? Later, you see Damien and Miranda chatting and being a nosy little girl. <laughs> you decide to insert yourself into the conversation. I look forward to this adventure, so. Is there anything more wonderful than getting insight into the lives of commoners? You better not pull that itch the whole time. My dads are lords of hell, you know. Technically, I'm royalty too. Are you though? Damien rolls his eyes and turns to you. Mrs. Panthera paired us up for our hands. Uh, for our hands-on homework assignment, going on an adventure? Apparently, I have some anger issues and a thirst for violence that I should be channeling into something creative. I can agree with that. <laughs> like a thirst for violence isn't productive in and of itself. And I'm supposed to work on being more independent, which is so strange since I told my ladies and gentlemen in waiting to fix that for me last week. I wonder what sort of adventure it might give us the wonderful experience we need to fix our perceived but obviously non-existent flaws. Duh. Because I'm so independent, I make my servants find independence for me. Duh. Go on a deep sea quest to steal beautiful pearls from a scary kraken. Journey to a volcano to have a hot time at a fire method strip. Whoa. I mean, to be honest, I feel like getting pearls and fighting a kraken sounds more interesting. <laughs> Ooh, not so bold. Ooh, yes! We should absolutely go at once. Nothing shall teach me independence like returning to my own kingdom. Where, can I, where I can be waited on hand and foot by all my servants. And we'll have daddy to smite down anyone who says I'm not independent. Wow. And of course, the nurse who raised me can also help dispel the rumors that I can't dispel rumors myself. This girl, I feel like this girl's oblivious. Damien looks at you like he probably thinks you're an idiot. Go get a life. You're an idiot. Yep, there it is. You lose two smarts and minus one fun. Oh, I'm sorry. Dang. I don't want to talk to them anymore. I don't want to talk to them anymore. They're annoying. Let's go to the basketball court, the gym. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Oh, we look kind of fire. I'm not going to lie. Get it? Fire. Fire. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. Clearly, you're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain two charm. Ooh. Later, you hear some kind of muffled squawking. You said, "Wait, Damien." 
Oh no! I want to talk to someone else. You think Damien's backpack seems to be thrashing violently? Yay! Woo -woo is here. I've been waiting all day to show someone. Miranda, do you ever listen to yourself? Oh! <laughs> Miranda pulls Damien's chicken out of his backpack, and the rooster begins uh, preening himself contentedly. <laughs> Isn't he the sweetest little thing? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use him for chicken fighting. Specifically, we're gonna have him chicken fight the chicken fighters to teach them a lesson. About why we shouldn't make chickens chicken fight. <laughs> now we just gotta find a way to make sure that our chicken wins the anti-chicken fighting chicken fight. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard, bro. Okay. Lift your rooster spirits with a romantic proposal? Or this chicken isn't an expert on violence. You are, Damien. Go undercover as a rooster? That would be kind of funny. Yeah, dress up as a chicken. Fucking metal. Oh, man, how did I not think of that? I love finding opportunities for violence. With that, you, Damien, and Miranda get to work on Damien's incredible chicken outfit. He is going to wear it. It's sort of just a yellow jumpsuit with feathers haphazardly glued to it, but people are dumb, so it might work. You follow them to the chicken fight, where Damien immediately begins to fight the chicken fighters with all his skills at violence, and his very convincing rooster impression. Impression. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm gonna just skip that. Damien yells, punching someone in the face. Cockle doodle, effin' do, <laughs> squawk. I can only fly 200 feet, he says as he delivers. A flying kick to the knee. Wow. Is he fighting other chickens for real? Cheap, cheap squawk! I live on every continent but Antarctica and can live for 15 years! He shouts as he karate chops someone's clavicle. You're not sure that actual roosters just scream facts about themselves to prove their identities? But Damien has won the fight by a landslide, and you can tell he's thrilled with his violence. And with you. You gain two boldness and one fun. Wow, okay. All right, let's let's talk to someone else for lunch. Let's talk to um them. Let's talk to them for lunch. When you arrive at their table, you find that Polly and Liam aren't eating. They're just taking pictures of their food. Hi, boo. Welcome to the don't need to eat. So we just take don't food pick zone, baby. We believe that food like heavy construction machinery should be seen and not tasted. Yeah, I mean, have you ever tasted heavy construction machinery? Have you? I don't know, maybe. My weekends are kind of a, uh, usually kind of a blur. Like last Saturday. There will be plenty of time to chronicle your exploits later, Polly. Right now, we need to focus on these food picks. While Liam and Polly were busy bantering, you were busily arranging a dope food pick of your own. Now to complete your masterpiece. Okay, a food pick of Liam taking a food pick. So meta. A food pick, but instead of food, it's just a bottle of whiskey with ketchup on it. Uh, let's do a food pick of Liam taking a food pick. You level your phone at Liam just as he's about to snap a food pick, but his vampire reflexes are too quick for you. Hm. Ha! Trying to out-meta the meta master, are you? We'll see about that. Liam levels his phone at Polly, just as she's about to take a food pick. Now you're taking a food pick of a food pick of a food pick, huh? Whoa, are we pointing our phones at each other now? I wanna play too. Suddenly, Polly's got her phone pointed at you. It's a food pick of 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 a... We've done it. We've created the meta triangle. The most meta shape in the existence. This is our finest hour. The world around you dissolves into green columns of numbers and letters. You've done it. You can see the code. You are the one. The programming of the video game you are in awards you by raising your relationship points with the character known as Liam. Okay. That was interesting. Let's do this. I feel like that was like the Matrix. We broke the Matrix. We never went to the auditorium. Let's go there. That day while rehearsing for the class play... It's as though the muses themselves had descended to give you something. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. Cool. Uh, so our creativity is at nine, our charms at six, fun's at nine, money's at nine, bold is six. Our smarts are five. We're pretty dumb. Later, you see Damien packing a bag. I'm going to wait for the weekend. To detention. I have detention again. Why? Just because I rigged the teacher's lounge door with booby traps that poured selkie uh, urine on whoever opened it. 
I mean, I didn't even set anything on fire this time. Let me spill the tea. This school is strict. <laughs> Anyways, just brainstorming some ways to keep things entertaining beyond ditching. Uh, do it, do it! Just, just ditch, do it! Cross-species economic and social barriers to make lifelong friends with a diverse group of students in detention. And find out through silly dancing that you're not so different after all. Huh? Are you saying are you saying that make it a whole high school musical play? I'm gonna say make friends. I never really thought of making connections before. I mean, what's this? Spooky high best friend race? But you're right. I could always use a, scape a scapegoat for some of my more sinister plans. When the weekend is over, the tales of Damien's exploits as outsider turned buddy echo through the halls. Rumors fly that handshakes were made up, deep secrets were revealed, and a whimsical dance seemed to take place in the library. Aw, oh, look at him making friends. By next week, people are still intrigued about why Damien is sort of frozen in the middle of the football field with his fist in the air. Dang, did you just start a new high school club? You gain two fun and, and one creativity. Okay. Okay. I kind of did that. I didn't want to go with the usual answer of just ditch. I, I wanted to be creative. Ew, why are the bathrooms all the way over there? Let's go there. That day, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You gave zero ish and you gained plus two boldness. Is there someone in here? Out of the corner of your eye. Why is Damien in the bathroom with us? Whoa. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice Damien playing with a big knife. Like he's trying to figure out where to stab himself with it. What? Hey, why'd you stop me? I was about to give myself a sweet body mod, bro. What? You know they say body modifications are forever, but the shock value sure isn't. I broke my horn off. And my, and my dads were only uh, ticked off for what, three weeks? Maybe I'm just not going hard enough. I need something that will really freak everybody out. Like a tattoo of my face. On my face. Huh? How are you gonna get a tattoo of your face on your face? Don't do don't get tattoos on your face, kids. Don't don't do that. Not too subtle. No, he said no, too subtle. Too subtle? That's not subtle at all. Hey, you look like a deviant. Got any good ideas for a sick body mod? Gun hands? You're thinking too big. It's the tiny details that really freak people out. How about a tattoo of your face on the tip of your tongue? That is kind of freaky. That's weird. No, not a tattoo of my face. An actual tiny face. No, I'll have my tongue split. Then I'll do two tiny faces. You're insane. And I could have my necromancer cousin animate them so they scream all high-pitched and stuff. You're insane! And on their tongues, four more tiny faces. Huh? Oh man, I'm going to be straight up unemployable. That night you have nightmares about Damien's tongue face. Wow, you gain plus two fun and uh, plus one smarts. Okay, we're at week... We're, we're in week three. We're halfway through. Let's do this. Okay. Who do we want to talk to? Uh, we haven't talked to this werewolf guy yet. You arrive at Scott and Miranda's table to find Scott happily chowing down while Miranda stares horrified at her tray. Mm, what's wrong, Miranda? Uh, yeah. Isn't it obvious? Right here on my tray. Fish sticks. <laughs> yeah. Fish stick Fridays. Isn't it great? Ooh. They're trying to make her a cannibal? No, it is not great, Scott. The fish are my subjects. This is clearly the work of the air people. Uh, air people? Yes. Do you not know the air people? The Merrill folks' most hated rivals? Don't you read the news? Um, yeah. Sure. Because I totally know how to read. But... Well, I must insist that you cease eating those fish sticks immediately. It is high treason. Oh, I was looking forward to fish stick Friday since... Since last fish stick Friday. Are you sure I can't eat any? He's asking Miranda while holding a fish stick really close to his mouth. But you feel like you've got a better answer to settle this argument. You blurt out. Haven't you heard, Scott? Fish sticks make you worse at sports. They contain baldropino and nerdo... Oh. <laughs> ah, yo. <laughs> okay, fish sticks contain absolutely no fish. It's all garden snails and food grade plastic. Scott can eat as many as he wants. Let's do that. See, Miranda, there's nothing wrong with fish sticks at all. They're good and good for you. I suppose you're right. Perhaps this is not the air people plot I suspected after all. Though I am disappointed that so much plastic is being used in fish sticks rather than plastic drink rings to catch birds with. Don't forget about the snails. There's snails in it too. 
I would much rather forget about the snails. Thank you. Does this mean you still don't want your fish sticks? Can I have them? Can I? Very well. You may partake. I'm not sure where my eating serves have gone off to in any case. I forgot. She doesn't even eat for herself. She makes other people eat for her. As you watch Scott chow down on his artificial fish fingers, you decide that both he and Miranda have weird relationships with food. Scott gives you a thumbs up while munching those fish fingers. All right. Evening. What do we want to do now? Let's do this. Let's do this. Woo! The only place we haven't gone is class yet, but we should go to class during the day. So let's go outdoors. Oh, I I did the half hour round. Oh, at what at one point, Juan, the small magical Latino cat, slips on a banana peel. You start to laugh at him. He asks you to stop, but you don't. You laugh so hard at him that you somehow steal too fun from him. Hooray! You're doing your thing when a wild Damien again suddenly appears. Noob. Hey you. Does he always call us a noob or does he say, hey you? You look like you have nothing better to do. I need a mount for the prom because walking is for losers. And also because I lost my driver's license after I drove my motorcycle through another Sunday school picnic. But I won't just take any lame mount. I need the best creature. So let's brainstorm. If you don't answer in the next 10 seconds, I'm putting a bit in your mouth and I'm, oh, oh, oh. Well, um, what about a giant gelatinous 50 nose creature at your house that spits bile and eats corpses? Yeah. Are you talking about grandma? Bro, don't take your grandma. Don't, don't ride your... You want me to... Bro, you do not turn your grandma into a horse, bro. Would you... Bro, okay. I need to... He needs to stop with these questions. What if they think she's my date? That would be crazy. It's bad enough I have to feed her and bathe her every night. You know? You look about the right size to be a grandma tree. Whoa, 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 whoa. You feed her humans? You're pretty sure that's not a compliment. You flee before you can find out for sure. You lose negative two charm and one fun. Dang! I tried my best with that. Dang! Okay, Damien creeps me out. I don't know. I don't know if I want to... If, if we want our uh, Wee Woo. We don't know if we want Wee Woo to go on... Like, go to prom with Damien. But I haven't made any other connections because Damien keeps showing up. Like, nobody else is showing up. That day, you listen to your elders and learn a valuable lesson. Sometimes after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Normally, Damien is totally tuned out in monstrous civics class, but today he actually seems excited. You ask him why. <laughs> Could we finally get an assignment I can get behind? Write a proposal to impro improve your neighborhood. Oh, look at him. Wanting to improve his neighborhood. My neighborhood is, you know, it's bad. So I'm going to come up with a new torture. I just need to pick an idea. Drinkable termites. Ew. No, the termite lobby will be all over us. Constantly firing shotgun. No, the NRA still refuses to associate with our brand. Repeated flaying with a dull, rusty butter knife. No, it's just not quite brutal enough. Literally, dang, I've got plenty of good ideas, but no great ones. Help me out here, yeah? Knife soup, a kitten you can never snuggle. Knife soup is a crazy torture. I kind of want to say that. Not so creative? Oh, what, are you telling me you don't like knife soup? That's practically all we eat, except for breakfast. Then we eat knife pancakes. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not giving our best food to the inmates. This is, this, it's not a knife bed and breakfast. While I'm at it, why don't I give them a plate of knife souffle and treat them to a dip in the knife tub, huh? My bad. I didn't know knives were your specialty. I'm sorry I even asked you. Damien's description of his home makes you really not want to visit. But he doesn't look like he'll be inviting you anyway. You lose two charm and one fun. Oh, we are losing our, oh, our charm is so low. Our charm is at two. Oh, I messed up bad, bro. Let's do this. Uh, I feel like, should I try again with him? I don't even... Should I try again with him? I guess I should. No sooner have you sat down at Damien and Miranda's table than a haunting melody fills the air. It is a melody of cold northern peaks, of cloying sweetness, of a supple bovine treat, the song of the ice cream wizard. Ooh, he's here. He's here. I'm going to eat so much ice cream and then puke on someone I don't like. This guy is a menace. Oh, goodness. The ice cream wizard only comes but once per solstice during the hour of the ascendant pancake. You see an old dude in a floppy blue hat pushing a refrigerated cart with this ish magic painted on the side. Ugh, so many great options to choose. 
Should I get a magma bar, brain destroyer, chocolate boomstick? What about a fear of death, a frozen cobra, berserker berry bliss? The wizard's frozen treats invariably turn me into a frog for some reason. Perhaps I simply have not tried the right one yet. But which to try if only someone would suggest a solution to what is truly the most difficult problem I have ever faced? What? Try those sugar basted prince lips, beat them up, and take all of ice cream. Yeah! How boorish. Did someone say bull rush? No, I said boorish, as in lacking social. I see. You did not mishear me after all, but we're simply looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. Joke's on you, Miranda. I'm never not looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. Look at all this ice cream I got. Oh no, I hope he's still alive. This one lets you breathe underwater. And this one licks you back? What? You brigand and you thief? I got you some sugar basted prince lips. My reservation suddenly seems to have vanished. Good, because I want to try this popsicle. This stick is supposed to reveal how I'm supposed to die. Wow. Huh. Who knew my death would involve so many bottlenose dolphins? How does that even happen? To celebrate the ice cream heist, Damien takes you to the beach and doesn't even try to drown you. Whoa, we just went on a date? He just took us to the beach? What, randomly? In the middle of the day? What? Okay. Hey, I'm not against it. Okay, cool. We need to up our charm. Let's go to the auditorium. All right. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems like you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in a discussion. So you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else joins you in a musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you're arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain plus two creativity. Pathetic. Dang, I signed up for this play because I knew I could fill out these costumes like a goddess. But now I'm starting to think I might actually hate acting. Which is weird because I love lying. Then that's your freaking problem, Vera. You shouldn't be lying. You should be living truthfully under um, imaginary circumstances. Duh. What, you think I don't know about acting? I have hidden depths, you know. My life isn't all punching and arson. It's just mostly those things. Look, you're an assassin, right? You just need to think of the best reason to assassinate someone. Oh, you know exactly what that is. Because nobody's paying you not to. No reason at all. Everyone is rotten, deserves to die. Nobody's paying you not to. Oh, wow. Honey, I've run a protection racket before and that's not how it works. When am I supposed to kill every single person who isn't paying me not to kill them? That's at least 12 people, maybe even 13. I simply can't be bothered. Hmm. Maybe the best reason to assassinate someone is that they jump in with bad answers to questions that weren't even directed at them. Hey, okay, that's a great reason to kill someone. Well, it looks like that's your cue to exit. You lose face and you lose two boldness and creativity. Dang it! Oh my goodness, I'm messing up my stats. I'm messing up my, my stats so bad. I need, to, I, need to, I need to make smart decisions. Let's go to the library. That day, you spent some time on the library's PCs mining some Bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any freaking idea how it actually works. Anyway, you gain two Bitcoins, which is equal to $2 million, which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars. So two money. Dang it! I thought I was about to have $2 million, bro. Liam and Damien stand over a pile of books Liam has gathered. They're scowling intently as if the books have personally wronged them. So Our school teaches the most common mainstream basic material imaginable. I think there's only one thing we could do, really. Petition the school to include works of value. Burn the books. Damien, you're absolutely right. The fight against anti-intellectualism must be telegraphed in strong action, not just empty words. Damien snaps his fingers and the books burst into flames. You have to admit, between a petition and fire, fire is a much cooler option. Unfortunately, it's at this exact moment that crazy Martin chooses to appear. Oh no, 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 not again. He always thinks these things are my fault just because they are. I can't get detention. I'm seeing a nondescript yogurt resort concert this weekend. Yogurt resort concert? And the band only plays once in the blue moon. When the lunar eclipse lines up with, there's no time to let, there's no time to let Liam finish. Quick, step in and be the hero they need. Burn down the entire library? No point of origin, no proof of culprit. Tell him there's a three-horned paper gobbler on the loose that was planning to devour the entire collection. What do I do? I don't even know what to do. Um, 
I don't want to make a bad decision because I keep making bad decisions. And then I think I'll keep my, 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 burn the entire library. Without thinking, you grab as many books as you can and throw them into the fire as well. You add a chair and table too. Turns out pretty much everything in the fi library is flammable. Uh, Liam and Damien get into the spirit and are soon adding computers, magazines, and students. Students, no! Crazy Martin runs to grab a fire extinguisher, at which point you, Liam, and Damien are able to sneak out of the library, leaving you behind no possible trace evidence, considering everything you touched is charred. Hot dang. That was some of the best arson I've ever seen. And believe me, I know my arson. Perhaps when they restock the library, they'll choose books with a more diverse array of historical perspectives. Or even better, they won't. And then we could do this all over again. If high school doesn't work out for you, at least you got a bright future as a career arsonist. You gain two boldness and one fun. Okay. Wow. Well, um, we haven't talked to, who is this? Uh, who should I talk to? This person's eyes look crazy. You're hoping to eat your, enjoy your meal in peace, but coach seems to have a different idea. What's this? Eating regular food again? Oh, this is the coach. Fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, blood. These are all parts of a complete lunch for sure. But you're forgetting the most important food group of all, dietary supplements. Don't you worry now. Oh, coach never goes anywhere without some emergency vitamins. Here, take your pick. It would be rude to turn him down. And who knows, maybe you'll gain some benefit after all. Coach holds two pill bottles. Palomino Gold 25 horse supplement for a shiny coat and luxurious mane. A complete black bottle emblazoned with Chinese character for party time. We're not a horse though. So I'm gonna just go with this one because we're not a horse. You swallowed the entire buy the entire bottle of mystery pills before coach could stop you whoa slow down there champ the old woman who sold me those vitamins told me they were basically poison i bought them anyway because as we all know whatever doesn't kill you makes you you wake up 36 hours later in the middle of an impassioned speech to the student council about dolphins doing things you have no idea what happened during those 36 hours but you have a new tattoo and everyone keeps calling you um wow you gain for fun. Wow, this game is crazy. Let's do this. Wow, high school is wild. What, why is his face there? Is he at the bathrooms? Show me that money. Oh, welcome to my little shop. Buy some stuff. I have stuff that will boost your stats, stuff that will lead you into stupid new adventures, stuff that might be much needed for some very specific moments. So take a look. Ooh. Oh, I have money. I'm gonna go with the tattoo. Yo, this is our last week. This is our last week. All right, let's 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 talk to them. You find Damien and Vera hunched over a scale model of Spooky National Bank made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. All right, we'll go into the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow the safe. They're planning a heist. They're literally going to steal from a bank. <laughs> Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? <sighs> because we only have so much C4 Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien points to a kosher... Wow. An ogre? There's an ogre? He's got eyes all the way around his head, never sleeps, don't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yo. Wee -hoo! We'll cut you in on this heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind. Before Vera or Damien can react, you rob the bank yourself and split the money with Vera. Eat the pickle. Quick as a flash, you snatch the pickle off the table and bite it in half. Yes, success! Suck it, ogre! That doesn't actually solve the... Look, Vera, now the patch to the vault is clear. We can blow it open and walk out with the cash. Bro's just a little bit dumb, but it's okay. But the ogre is still there. The map doesn't lie, Vera. I see no ogre. Fine. Why don't you two just rob the bank then? I'll focus on my... My... Whoa, my other side venture. You're happily, you ha you're happy to share a romantic heist with Damien. Together, you eat the actual ogre just like you ate the pickle. And everyone knows the police ogres are the ultimate aphrodisiac. We ate the ogre? Bro, we ate Shrek. We literally ate Shrek. What? Let's do this. Okay. Okay. Ooh, how should we end the day? Let's go here again, the gym. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiations for a truce. After hours of intense dip um, diplomacy, you commit to an agreement. What an unexpected twist. 
you gain plus 10 righteousness, but this game is so wrong in so many ways that you could you would be lucky if you could do anything with that. And plus two charm. Okay, our charm went up a little. You're chilling out, not murdering anybody, when Damien slinks up to you. He's hauling a large sack with the words, definitely not a corpse written on it. It's definitely not a corpse. Hey, noob. Hey, noob. Hey, um, you're not gonna believe this, but there's definitely actually a corpse in this bag. No way, bro, no way. You never would have guessed. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying I'm exactly responsible for making this corpse. At least not with my lawyer present. <laughs> well, let's just say he and I apparently had different definitions of rock, paper, scissors. Anyway, I'm not interested in going back to jail. Going back? So I need you to help me hide this body real quick. It would be an extremely attractive thing to do. Luckily, hiding dead bodies is kind of your thing. You share your brilliant solution. Disguise them as a drinking fountain. No one will know the difference. Just chuck them in my garage. He'll blend in perfectly with my collection of vintage dead bodies. Is it dumb to dress them up, disguise them as a drinking fountain? That'll be nasty if people drink from a corpse as a drinking fountain. Just chuck them in my garage. You throw the corpse in the back of Damien's dread chariot and hoof it over to your garage. Are, are these all yours? Some of these are total classics. Elvis Presley, Amelia Earhart, You've got three popes in here. Whoa. I spent all this time trying to be a great murderer. When the, when the greatest murderer of all time was right next to me the entire time. Damien lovingly lays his mangled corpse next to your pristine collector's items. A look of awe on his face. This is insane. Joke's on him. You're actually just a really accomplished grave robber. You gain two smarts and one charm. The monster prom draws near. Woo! Who do you want to ask a prom? Well, the only one, I can't, oh, none of them. You can just do none of them. Well, I feel like this whole time we've been building a connection with Damien. I think we should ask Damien. Ask Damien to the prom. They kind of look like a good couple too. Like Wee Woo and Damien kind of like, they look like they go together. She's, she's fire. He's a, a devil, you know? Let's do this. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom? With you? Stupid. I need spice in my life. If you were a spice, you would be, um, hmm, some bland spice. What a loser. You couldn't get a date for monster prom? Actually, you couldn't get a date for the rest of your life? Some nights alone in your bed, you wish sadness? You, 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 you wish that you had, because at least then you wouldn't be getting so much. What? I thought we were bonding. Those six weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendships and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Damien became an interior designer specializing in torture machines. I don't care about Damien. Last month, Vogue magazine called his products the refined marriage between Macabre and Sheep. Miranda used her vast knowledge of surfs to get a job handpicking the best surfs for other people. Unsurprisingly, she ended up leaving her surfs to do the work. Liam started an in in iconoclastic band that broke all conventions. Their latest album has been a hit. It has no songs at all. Their album is actually just a banana set on fire. And be sure, Liam doesn't care if you don't get it. For those six weeks, the Monster Prom seemed larger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then. There were plenty of battles left in the war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Bro, I'm actually so annoyed because like I was looking forward to a happy ending. If you guys want to see a part two with like, I don't know, other choices, let me know. So if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe to join the squad. Follow my Snapchat, follow my Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.